Hey everyone, it's Jack from CultaHug.com outside the front of our hotel. Look at that lovely scenery, gorgeous. Las Vegas, as we've learned, is a ridiculous city. It's just a strip of gambling places in a desert. We knew this, but when you see it in person, it's quite surreal. The plan for today is to head to StarCast. We're going to have a little wander around inside Caesar's Palace, which is a cavernous building. Um, it's very easy to get lost. Hopefully we find some wrestlers. Hopefully we find some fans. We'll just see who we can talk to, have a little wander about, experience StarCast. We went yesterday, and it was awesome, but it wasn't really the right setup for interviews and stuff because everyone was going to big events like the press conference where Dust Dustin Rhodes revealed a Dusty's favourite T-shirt. Hopefully today it's a little bit less tense, and then after we've done all this sort of stuff at the convention, we'll be heading to the MGM Grand, where we'll be attending AEW Double or Nothing. Looks like it's going to be a pretty hectic day, but a very fun one as well. So we are here outside the front of the iconic Caesars Palace, the venue of StarCast, but also the venue of about 20 other conventions as well. It's a bit hectic to find people, but once we get through the casino, once we get through all the initial stage layers of the of the casino, we will find the convention floor where there are various rooms with various things going on, merch, meet and greets, stage shows, although they seem to take place mainly yesterday. We'll just mill about and see what we can find. Maybe we'll even meet the big man himself. Sam, I can't tell that, Joe. May, I'll do it again. Maybe we'll meet, keep it in. Maybe we'll meet the big man himself, Julius Caesar. Right, let's go. <laughs> no, don't follow me. So we're here inside Caesar's Palace now. If anyone, well, we obviously couldn't film in the casino floor itself, but now we're in the convention area. It should be fine. If not, media passes. That should sort us out. It's great. Yo, get these guys recognizing me and show. <laughs> Cheers, lad. <laughs> oh, they were Scottish. Oh, big. Um, yeah, so basically you've got to walk down this very long corridor and then at some point we turn left, I believe. Yes, thank you. I'm getting heckled left, right and centre. Uh, he didn't even know the channel. Um, and hopefully when we get there, it's going to be, as the kids say, popping off. Um, as you might tell, it's very ornate. Too, yeah, too sweet there. Yeah, another... S <laughs> oh dear me, I'm too hungover for this. I mean tired. Um, I might as well talk for a little bit about the indie wrestling show I went to last night. Yeah. yeah, it was absolutely insane. It was on Fremont Street, which is like old Vegas, like Rat Pack Vegas. And um, basically, it started an hour and a quarter late, which by that point was uh, quarter past midnight. And then <laughs> there was various people involved. Uh, Teddy Hart was there. Davey Boy Smith was there. Um, Rikishi was there, but just in a managerial role. It was intense and... Not ideal. <laughs> the show was opened by Joey Janela cutting a promo. Uh, and then the D's Nuts guy from the famous meme, D's Nuts, was there. Apparently he lives in Vegas. He's not there. I thought you were going to be like, <laughs> and there he is. And uh, him and Joey Janela cut a promo in the ring. And the guy didn't understand that Joey wanted him to say his line. He kept like feeding him in for his cue. He was like, you know, what you got to say about that? And he'd be like, I don't know, man. I'm having a good time. And I was like, just say the line. Um, Yo. Thank you. You don't understand. Oh, you do as well. Oh. Thank you. How's your day been? Great. Great. Since Thursday. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm from Vegas. I'm from Las Vegas. Nice. We live here. We live here. You live here. Oh, are you going to the show? Yeah. Ah, nice. Excellent. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone's getting involved. Good to meet you, man. Yeah, I'll talk as we do it. <laughs> um, so, as you can tell, we're approaching. Cheers, man. Thank you. Oh, oh no. He caught me. Please, please give me a high. Please, like, please. <laughs> you left me hanging on camera. No, it's all good. Thank you, man. Thank you. I love support and I love watching. It's fantastic. Are you going to the show tonight? Absolutely, my friend. What's, your, what's the match you're most looking forward to? Cody and Dustin should be fantastic. Mm. I'm really excited for that. My voice is horse and shit because I was at a wrestling show on Wednesday. Bleep um, Look at that. Uh, Cody and Dustin should be great. And I'm also excited for the Battle Royal because a lot uh, of like independent stars that I'm very familiar with are going to yeah, be there, so yeah. that should be exciting. Cool. Well, thanks very much for... Look out for this video. You'll probably be on it. Who knows? Thank you. Jordan WS on Twitter, my man. Oh, he's, oh that's professional. Well done. <laughs> um, good stuff. Yeah, of course you can. Yeah. Sorry, dude. That's okay. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Thank you. it. Appreciate Thank it as well. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, I can't remember what my train of thought. It's gone. We're going to Starcast. We're going to Starcast. It's going to be good. See you in a, in a bit. I didn't handle that well at all. 
So we are now in the convention centre and we've met a man I'm very interested to talk to this weekend specifically, of all weekends of course, because it's it's the return of competition I guess in the wrestling industry. You might say, I'm very interested to get your take on it, it's the one and only Eric Bischoff. First of all, how are you doing? Are you okay? I'm doing great. Enjoying Excellent. myself like everybody else. Excellent stuff. Now, it is double or nothing today, uh, this afternoon in fact. Um, what do you think this could potentially do for the wrestling business if, it, if it's a success? Well, I think, you know, for a lot of reasons, it's already a success. Okay. You know, they've sold out um, the arena. There's a tremendous amount of anticipation, excitement, interest, all of the above uh, in the product. So I think they've done a great job in creating momentum for themselves. And I'm pretty sure tonight they're going to execute an amazing show. And I think that the, the momentum is going to continue to build. Um, do you think that AEW should take inspiration from WCW in a small way or in a big way, or do you think they should maybe try and just do entirely their own thing? Oh, I think you know a week, a wink, excuse me, a wink and a nod. Okay. You know, to WCW is fine, but you know that was twenty some odd years ago, mm -hmm. and I think you know the the audience has changed, the the product has changed dramatically. So I think they'd be uh, far ahead of the game to establish their own brand and identity. And every once in a while, look back and acknowledge uh, for the sake of nostalgia. But uh, I'm sure they're going to find their own brand and make their own statement in their own way. Cool. Uh, and finally as well, is there one particular match or moment or wrestler that you're particularly looking forward to uh, this afternoon? Well, Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega. You know, I've, I've known Chris for a long time. I worked with Chris both in WCW and in WWE. So uh, naturally, I'm interested in, in seeing how he does. But Dustin Rhodes and Cody Rhodes is going to be a great match for the same reason. You know, Dustin's you, a great friend of mine, so I look forward to that. Were you at the press conference yesterday? No, I wasn't. Did you see what happened when Dustin revealed the Dusty's favorite T-shirt? It added a real spark to the whole thing. I heard about it. Oh, it was... The, the room, it was more of like, it wasn't so much a cheer. It was more of like a, oh, <laughs> it was a good moment. But um, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I hope you enjoy the show as well. And yeah, I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you very much. Any, any closing thoughts? Bye. No, yeah, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> thank you very much. So now we've found, well, a very familiar face in Rikishi. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good, man. Thank you very much. Now, when I came over and approached you, you said you've given me a very special treat. You're going to introduce your whole family. Um, so we'll go this way first. Man, I, my, I go by the name Jacob Fatu, the Samoan werewolf, the son of the Tonga Kid. And over here we have... What's up, y'all? My name is Seba Fatu, the son of the WWE Hall of Famer Rikishi and brother to the Usos. Now, you guys were wrestling on a show last night that I was at. Um, it was a very... And you were also at. It was a very peculiar show. It was outside, and the, which we're not too used to in the UK. There was all kinds of craziness going on. You guys wrestled multiple matches, I think, as well. And even you made an appearance at ringside, too. How was the whole experience for you guys? I mean, man, the experience was great. Las Vegas is just another type of crowd, man. It's just that old, rugged, cutthroat ECW crowd. But overall, man, you know, uh, it just felt good to be in the ring um, with another special family in the wrestling business, uh, uh, the new Hart Dynasty. Uh, Debbie Boy Smith, Teddy Hart, and Brian Pillman as well. So it was great. Absolutely. How did you find it? Well, you know what? I, I'm always for independent scene, especially the younger generation that's coming through. Um, I actually went out there to go support uh, my nephew that was out there. But, you know, anytime you get to uh, go out there and you, uh, for me, to, to go visit independent wrestling, it's, it's always a, 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 I'm very happy to go see the younger generation. To be able to give my input when they come into the locker room kind of, what to do, what not to do, if they ask. But at the same time, I'm there to support the family members. We just saw another family member pop up in the back. There we go. Do you want to introduce yourself as well? <laughs> Hello, how are you doing today? My name is Tonga Kid. A big uh, shout out to everybody here in Vegas. Uh, really appreciate the, the love and support from all the fans. You know, we're just here. You know, we're here to teach our kids how it is to... Go ahead. Well, that was my next question, actually. As the older generation, what kind of advice do you give to the younger guys? Well, I, I know for, like, you know, for family and self, you know, it's our culture. It's already taught to them. Exactly. It's the love. It's the respect. It's to be able to family look out for one another. No one in this industry gets rich by themselves. No one starves by themselves. And so, you know, with the newer generation that comes through, and that's what we teach them also as well is try to give them a piece of our culture. They always wonder why 
the Samoan dynasty just continues to grow. Well, I want to say this. It's just, number one, we love the industry. We got very good teachers. Shout out to my uncles, Alpha and Sika, uh, WWE Hall of Famers. Uh, and also to the mighty Yokozuna. Also to the Samoan Bulldozer. I mean, the list goes on and on. So, you know, it's important for us as the energy, uh, industry goes on. As, as the OGs in the industry, we kind of sit back and, you know, kind of watch them grow and just give them our advice and our experience of what it is to become successful. Well, thank you guys for this interview. Um, if anyone else wants to say any final words, feel free. I don't mind. You, hey, man. you can follow me at Selfafatu on Instagram. He's got the Instagram in. Underscore Samoan underscore werewolf. Samoan werewolf at Twitter, Jacob Fatu, or just Google it. Don't be about it, tweet about it. <laughs> oh, you're lying. Wait, my turn now. Hello? <laughs> they know you guys already. Okay. <laughs> okay. I am Tonga Kin. And of course, Rikishi. And so I, I want to personally say this on behalf of my family, the Samoan Dynasty Legacy, UK, the fans that are out there, yep. with it, with, is it with much love and respect? Thank you so much yeah. for supporting this family for well over 75 plus years in this industry. And I'm proud to say that the Samoan dynasty, you know, you see every single member is huge. Yeah. So I'm proud to say that we have opened up our own clothing line. Oh. And you can go on Instagram, you'll see it. It's Blackout Fights Gear. Right here. Yeah. You can follow us on the Samoan dynasty. And you all know where you can follow Big Key Shaz. Yeah. So right. which, which much love and respect. Thank you, UK. We love you guys out there. Yeah, yeah. So now we are joined by Darby Allen and Priscilla Kelly. How are you guys enjoying Las Vegas? We got here like an hour ago and... I don't know. Okay. I'm tired. You're tired. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, now, it's of course a historic weekend of wrestling. Um, AEW's on the rise and everything. What do you think it is about the independent, I guess, spirit of wrestling that kind of has energized so many people recently? I feel like it's like an underdog mentality. Mm. Like a lot of people want to see something different yeah. that's not been force fed for them for years and years actually like succeed and then you can hear their stories when you hear like the AEWs like behind behind the bell and all that that just came out and people are like I you truly want these people to succeed yeah. and I feel like fans there's a lot of hard working mother blue collar boys around here and I feel like they can relate to cool. what Cody stands for um, and what are your thoughts on that as well what do you think it is about independent wrestling that really has kind of driven people to make something like this this weekend um i don't know i think it's just the opportunity for everybody looks up to one of these wrestlers at least and i think it's you know cool that these fans can come in and they can just meet meet their heroes basically and yeah. uh get to know them and it's you know it's like meeting your favorite band member right okay yeah. Yeah. um now you were recently over in progress for super strong star 16 how was that experience how did you find the uk fans and all of that it was my first time in the uk hey. yeah yeah, and it was my last time, I think, in progress, but uh, it was awesome. Yeah. I, re I really liked it. It was, like, totally different, and, you know, I'd love to go back more and more to the U.K. Now, you wrestled a man I'm familiar with by the name of Paul Robinson. He's a nasty, he's a nasty man, really, isn't he? He's not, he's not the nicest guy. He's a nasty little man. <laughs> he's tremendous at getting a reaction from the crowd, I guess you can say that, and I feel like you guys do that as well. You're really good at garnering a reaction whether as we've seen recently whether positive or negative um how do you view that do you do you mind the negative attention you sometimes get yeah you gotta expect it and i i actually like it because i just love pissing people off okay fair so. and what, what about you yeah i just appreciate any attention like if it's good bad i don't care if people are talking about me right cool well what better way to end it than that thank you guys very much i uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and uh it was nice to meet you we're now joined by uh swoggle dylan sir how are you tired tired uh, Priscilla Kelly said that earlier as well a lot of people seem pretty tired today and we've got a whole wrestling show as well are you looking forward to the show? is a show tonight? <laughs> <laughs> you may have been um, now this weekend you've become very good friends well apparently you've been talking for years we, we but stole your chair, we right? stole your chair I'm really sorry no I, I <sighs> we stole Blue Mini's chair I'm so sorry he stole his chair. he's bigger than me yeah. okay um, now you've become friends with Matthew Botchamania Matthew the infamous he's yeah, like, so, him and I have never met, yeah. and we've been friends for, like, man, gotta be close to almost 10 years. Wow. 
it's crazy. Since he started, I, I've been watching him. We've just became, become friends. And we finally got to meet yesterday. It's awesome. Did he live up to the expectation? Yeah, I thought he was Australian. <laughs> Everyone says that to us. Yeah, yeah, I thought he was Australian. Okay. And uh, when I when he wasn't Australian, I was very confused. But it's okay. That's okay. Yeah. I mean, I I wish he would have been Australian. It would have been a lot cooler. They are they are generally a cooler nation than we They're are. Nicer. They're not nice. They have much better weather. They do have better weather. I like them a lot more. Thank you for that. Um, now, what has been your highlight of the weekend so far? Doesn't necessarily have to be wrestling. Could be casino based. Anything. I won five hundred dollars last night. At Are you the serious? Casino. Yeah. I lost six hundred. Oh. But I won five hundred. Oh, okay. Um, and I was playing a Willy Wonka Oompa Loompa machine. We, uh, I'm not gonna... yeah. My lips are sealed. I'm not going to say anything. It's, uh, it's real life. <laughs> my, I kept saying that my people paid me. Okay. Yeah. Right. But then that hubris, that arrogance, it all got taken away. The hubris? Hubris. What is that? Hubris is like an ancient Greek concept. That, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> it means like um, arrogance. It means like, oh, you're so confident you're going to win, and then it all gets taken away. It's ancient Greek, but you're from England. Yeah, I did. I studied it. It's good. It doesn't. It's 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 cool. It's okay. Um, moving swiftly on to another highbrow piece of culture. You're friends with two of the two of the Impractical Jokers, or just the whole crew? I've become friends with uh, with the whole crew, yeah. and yeah, I consider them them uh, them friends. And whenever they're in the area, I, I go out and, and see them. I brought my son to the last one. He, I've seen him like five or six times now, and this year, my son, at nine years old, finally said, "Dad." Can I go with you when you see him next time? And I go, yeah. So it was like it was a real cool dad and son night cool. at the Joker's, and we had a we had a blast. And it makes me like it just it makes wrestling so cool right. that they like wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just shows how cool wrestling really is. Mm. Um, it's it's just it's awesome when yeah. they when they uh, when they support pro wrestling. Like we all do, we're all fans. Yeah, I mean that—that's the sort of sense you get when you sit in a room like this. You get a sense of wrestling, really, for all the kind of negative aspects of wrestling that people are often quick to highlight. It does bring people together in a way as well. Football doesn't have a cult or a culture like this. Yeah. Basketball, baseball, your football, soccer. Uh, <laughs> there's no cult. Like, there's no. There isn't a football con. Yeah, right, right. This is awesome. Yeah. This is us. And maybe it's because we're like kind of the island of misfit toys right, at times. Right, right, right. And we have to have our own thing. I've heard wrestling described as a lost boys club before. That's us. Right, right. That's literally us. And it, but it's awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll be on, misfit, I'll, on the island of misfit toys my whole life because I'm a wrestling fan. Excellent. Well, that's a very nice way to end it. I should give Blue Mini his chair back before he... Ah, he's a nice guy. He won't do anything terrible. He's a nice guy. I'll, get, I'll give him the chair back anyway. Chair back. Thank you very much. Matthew um, is so much better than you. But, more, but less understandable, I feel. His accent's a bit thicker. That's why I thought he was from Australia. <laughs> we're now joined by the one and only Blue Mini. Now, sir, you were holding a flyer of sorts in your hand before. Do you want to display that? Oh, look at that. Yeah, look at me. Look at me. Uh, my cartoon rend rendition if I was Conrad Thompson. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's cool. Uh, I'm here hanging out with fine folks at StarCast. And uh, I'm also promoting a video game that comes out early next year. Oh. Early 2020. Called uh, Retromania Wrestling. Mm. It's, the, uh, inspir it's, it's inspired by the old school WWF WrestleFest. You know, uh, the, the folks who made it, you know, I've been in the industry for a long time, and it's been a passion, a passion project. Right. Uh, so far, it's going to be BWO, Road Warriors, Tommy Dreamer, Zack Saber Jr. Uh, they just signed Cold Cabana. Oh right! Yeah, you, you were naming names then, and you said Zack Saber Jr. and I was like, he's a lot younger than all the other guys. <laughs> well, they didn't want to do it like a modern take on it. Right, right, right. Uh, it's still going to be like 16-bit graphics. Oh, nice. Uh, you know, Tommy Dreamer is going to have his House of Hardcore wrestling in there, so we're going to have the mini ECW arena in there and stuff like that. Cool. And it's going to be on you know PC, Nintendo Switch, and hopefully uh, Xbox and PS4. So I'm just doing that, and, you know, and uh, having fun because I'm a I'm a big gamer. I'm a big nerd, you know, and 
I love pro wrestling, and hopefully everybody loves this game. Excellent. Uh, make sure to check that out. Now, I'm glad you brought up ECW. Of course, yes. we were going to talk about ECW. Oh, please, please. Um, But have you noticed any similarities between ECW's heyday and the beginning now of AEW? Do you think there's a certain similarity there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ECW started, uh, it, it was based on word of mouth, buzz. You know, uh, even when they were running their, the early days, it became this thing for, like, underground tape trading right. you know like if ECW had social media back then we'd either be uh, on national TV or in jail <laughs> so you know uh, but uh, maybe both yeah 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 we'll be in jail on social media <laughs> but uh, yeah with the AEW guys they've created their own they, This, is, I mean everybody thinks All In was a, you know their first show but you know Double or Nothing is the first official yeah. a, AEW show so yeah. they've created this wonderful word of mouth uh, they got a ton of brilliant minds behind the scenes with the Bucks, Cody, and uh, the, the, they hired a wonderful staff. So they got all this going on, and they're doing Twitter, YouTube. You don't need me to explain everything you've done because if you're, everybody knows what they've done, and it's, it's been brilliant. Mm. It's brilliant. I mean, they've taken advantage of you know just natural resources that are out there available to everybody, and they've done it brilliantly. What do you think um, the similarity is kind of, what do you think it is that connects the guys behind ECW and the guys behind AEW? What is it that inspires that passion to bring so many fans to the product? It's the passion to give the fans a great product. Right. Uh, ECW reached against the machine, yeah. you know, and the time when wrestling was a little bit cartoony. Uh, I mean, and we, I just did a, uh, a panel with WrestleCrap. We were watching all the stuff, you know, when wrestling was like a little bit cartoony and I don't want to say insulted intelligence, but you know, just needed something. You know, needed some blood and guts. You know, meat and potatoes, kind of like old school wrestling. And ECW did that. Yeah. You no, know, there weren't weren't fancy lights or entranceways and stuff like that. Maybe a little towards the end, but mm. with AEW, it's everybody who wants to not reinvent the wheel, but make the wheel stronger. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's a good way. Yeah, they're yeah. making. They're not reinventing the wheel, but they they're making the wheel stronger, and they're giving fans an alternative. They're, more choice in this business is better. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm so I'm happy for him because I'm still a fan. Yeah. You know, I'm a fan of everybody involved. You know, I could take off my wrestling cap and just watch as a fan. And tonight I'll be watching as a fan. Excellent. And finally, as well, that that feeds in very nicely to my last question. Um, is there a particular match or moment that you're potentially looking forward to? I'm just going. I'm just going to watch the whole show as a whole. Uh, the key to any really good wrestling show is ebbs and flows, yeah. highs and lows. You know, you can't go up, 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 because once you go here, where do you go? Yeah. You got to bring them up. You got to bring them down. Bring them up. I just want to see the ebb and the, I want to see how the show flows. Uh, sometimes I watch the matches. Sometimes I watch the crowd. Okay. You know, uh, sometimes, you know, I've watched, I watched Hogan and Andre a million times for WrestleMania 3. Sometimes I'll watch the, the match, and then sometimes I'm watching the audience. Right. You know, I'm looking for the flash bulbs. Mm. So tonight I'll be watching not only the wrestling, but I'll be watching the crowd. And uh, I just want, I just want good wrestling. Yeah. And, and I think I'm confident they're going to deliver, cool. because again, I'm, I'm expounding. Wrestling's like a bowl of checks mix, you know, like a party mix. You might not like the pretzels, but you like the cereal. You like the peanuts. You gotta have a little bit of, for everybody. Yeah. And that's what they've done. They got a little bit for everybody. So, yeah. you know, if you don't like this, you're gonna love that. Yeah. So, but as a show as a whole, I think they've done a wonderful job. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. Blue Thanks meeting. for having me. That's okay. That's cool. Um, check out the video game as well. Do you want to hold it up one more time as we, as we do a dramatic zoom in? Retro media. Uh, yeah, retro media. Retro mania wrestling. Retro mania wrestling. Yeah, uh, we, we, we still have more guys. Well, not we, but they have still more guys to are uh, in talks with. And uh, if it comes through, it's going to be tremendous. Excellent. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. And have a great weekend. So, as you can see, the line for meet and greets is still stretching on, and the convention's nearly an end. That is the dedicated meet and greet room. There's no, like, open tables like the interviews we were doing before, so there's just no chance of getting anyone in there, sadly. But it has been a really good day. We've talked to some awesome people, and uh, someone has just showered something, so that's awesome. Uh, yeah, it's been a really good day at StarCast. Sam, have you had fun? Yeah, it's been great. It's been really good. Thank you for your interview. Um, yeah, hope you've enjoyed this video, and in a, an hour or two, we'll be at All Elite Wrestling's Double or Nothing. Oh, exciting times. Partying down, as the kids say. I'll check the job, but don't forget to join us. Thanks very much for watching, and let us know what you think in the comments section down below. You can follow Cultaholic on Twitter at Cultaholic, and on Facebook at facebook.com 
forward slash cultaholic. If you enjoy what we do, then please do check out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash cultaholic, where you can pledge. And don't forget, of course, most importantly of all, to hit subscribe and to join us.